Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuam, and today I'm going to talk with Deborah Tuis, a talented actress and producer. I'm waiting for her to join the chat so that we can get it started. Hey everyone. Hi, Ahmed. So by any minute, uh, Deborah will join us and we can start our interesting conversation. Hi, Giti. So, I think she has difficulty to join. Let me see, if that's the case, I will uh, restart the chat again. Yeah, as, uh, as far as I know, Deborah is ready, but it seems that, yes, yes, there she is. Let me send the request. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Oh, I can't hear you either. Uh, now I can hear. Uh, yeah, excellent. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Where are you now? I'm uh, just outside of New York City in New Jersey. Ah, that's why you asked me whether this is Pacific time or not. Yeah. <laughs> you have three hours away from Pacific time. <laughs> yep. So uh, how is everything with you? Uh, any news? Uh, yeah, just working on a lot of different things, hoping all of them pay off. <laughs> um, because, yeah. you know, when it's all creative endeavors, you never know if it's going to hit or not. And um, just bracing myself, hoping that, you know, this, the, some other wave of the pandemic or, you know, whatever doesn't try to shut down production again, because things are finally starting to move. And, and it's... Uh, that would really suck. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So, David, would you please briefly tell us about your background in movie industry? Sure. Um, I came to New York City in uh, the late 80s and went to NYU briefly. Then I left NYU because I didn't want to get a drama degree. I thought there were other ways to <laughs> learn about the industry without going to debt for Now it's okay. And so um, I started working. I was acting a lot in off-off-Broadway shows and independent uh, NYU films. And then I got a job as a receptionist at a commercial production facility so that I could learn about film production. And um, then I guess it was probably about 91, I um, started making films. And then um, I also have been always acting in, you know, other things. And uh, I've, uh, I, in the 90s especially, I was very, very involved in the independent film world. Um, and then once, um, once, I guess it was right after 9-11, I started just focusing on more um, episodics and other things like that, and then making more of my own content that was a little bit bigger. But um, I kind of drifted away from doing a lot of indies uh, after 9-11 because um, the, the financial crisis that hit, because of that, uh, kind of decimated the way indie films make money with DVD sales and um, you know foreign countries wouldn't pay that much to get the rights for a movie and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and so I've been doing that. And um, right now, I mean, I just wrote a script for a group of people that are trying to start um, an alternative type of film studio. And I'm working on, um, I was cast as Amelia Earhart in this, in this really cool project. It's a series that they're pitching. Um, and then I've got my own series that are coming out and um, just all kinds of stuff. I'm working on a, um, a reality, 
it's kind of, uh, it's a strange <laughs> concept. I'm working on this thing where it's kind of a reality show, but it's um, also, it's about the making of a reality show. So it's a little bit of um, like a waiting for Guffman or best in show type of thing, because you get to know the people behind the scenes. It's kind of funny. Yeah, as, and as far as I know, uh, your dream role was to be a, a superhero. Yes. And yesterday you told me you are having a promo for that. So yes. what is that about? I, uh, I've been uh, chosen to be the spokesperson and um, the superhero chick for uh, Yummy Zest, which is a digital marketing platform. And uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm the Yummy Zest girl. <laughs> That's interesting. And uh, you were also in the movie Kick-Ass. So yes, I played the what teacher. was your experience uh, in that movie? It was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, uh, I'm sorry, my cat is like <laughs> bumping my arm trying to get me to pedal. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. And Aaron Johnson was great. And uh, Matthew Vaughn was fantastic. And it was, I, I had a great time. I was in Toronto for that shoot and they took really good care of me. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience. It was a lot of fun. And I like being, you know, in something as uh, iconic as that because I actually ended up getting a trading card out of it and everything, so. Yeah, actually yeah. recently I defined a new project on IMDb and I was searching for producers Oh. And that's the way I got introduced to you. I found your name there. <laughs> At first, I didn't know. When I clicked on that and I saw Kikas, ah, oh, this is Mrs. Mace. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Zane, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and you were also in the TV series uh, Law and Order. How was the experience in that movie? That was great. I've, I mean, I've done all of the typical New York City episodics, um, and they've all been a lot of fun. It's always, it always feels like a vacation after making my own content to go on set and just be an actor and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> it's really, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's this like, is actually the difference between being an uh, actor and producer, right? So you don't have that much responsibility when you're an actor. Uh, you have no responsibility as an actor. Anybody that rolls their eyes and says how hard it is to be an actor is just a sissy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is it true that uh, Crazy Town is based on your own life? Yes. Throughout the 90s, I was uh, dancing in topless places. Um, in New York City and New Jersey, and that's how I paid for my movies. And um, and Crazy Town is unique because I one of the reasons I wanted to make a series about the strip club world was because everything that's been out there about that that universe is is pretty much pandering to a male. <coughs> it's pandering to a male um, fantasy, and I wanted people to realize that it has absolutely <laughs> nothing. There's nothing like that at all going on. It's a completely different world. Nobody understands it. And so uh, it was really critical to me to um, show people the real inside. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, this is pretty unique. And uh, I never seen such a thing before. And yeah. do you, where pe uh, people can find that uh, series and watch it? Well, um, there's a platform that I was helping develop with a couple people, but that's in, uh, there may be some bigger people coming on to um, take part in that. So in the meantime, uh, there's this website that I'm part of, it's called Soho Muse, and it's just kind of like a social media platform for artists and creatives. And they're going to be, a, be doing a good big push for the show. And they'll be showing uh, the first and second episodes, as well as having a bunch of the actors interviewed right after. Um, and that'll be after October 15th. So we'll be doing a big, big promotion for that. Now, what I really like about you is that you are very open about this, about your past, that you've done this for making uh, like short movies or independent movies. Oh, feature. And I, not I, only you're <laughs> open to that, you even made a movie based on that to explain, okay, well, what I went through. Yeah, yeah. Well, even my very first film, A Gun for Jennifer, and I mean, I never actually made short films 
until I think I think the first short film I did was in 2000, 2012 of my own. Everything was always features because it's it's like you know once you once you go through the hell <laughs> of getting a script done and casting and getting the locations and all this other stuff, you know it and it's just as easy to keep going once you've started that ball rolling. You know, instead of doing a 10 or 20 page, just keep going, you know, and do 90 pages, just get it done. And that way, you know, you end up with a feature. There's not much you can do with a short. So I never, I never focused on that. But yeah, that is how I, I paid for my, my productions. And, um, you know, that ran its course and I got done. <laughs> and, and, and these days, do you think what's the best way in order to find a budget for the movies now that you are more experienced? Well, now, I mean, I've been getting paid to write scripts um, pretty well. And then um, for prior to the pandemic, I was doing a lot of um, a commercial and corporate production as a director producer and that was that was financing that's what financed all of crazy town i mean i did videos for events that were with samsung and boar's head um b &H photo i mean all these different events and that i mean i was completely self-financed with crazy town and we we shot seven episodes for the entire first season there are seven half hour episodes so it was pretty, pretty amazing to be able to do that. That was such a wonderful thing. But now that this thing has shut us all down and I mean, I, I didn't really work um, between March and I guess June. And then that's when I was asked to write a script. And so now I'm, I'm doing some other things, um, working on like little promotional videos for this architectural firm and things like that, but nothing, nothing is paying quite like <laughs> the corporate world did. So, yeah. you know, I'm trying to find that, that magic bullet that's going to be my, my film financing thing, <laughs> but yeah. it'll come. I believe, I know, I always, I'm, I'm an optimist for better or for worse. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That will work for you. Um, I'm, I'm sure you are talented in many aspects. Uh, so for sure it will happen for you either as writer, as producer, it will happen for you anyway. I hope so. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on it. <laughs> I, I need, <laughs> I need to, uh, it's like, uh, what's that great song? Um, I will buy you a new life. Everclear, I think, sang it, right? Yeah, yeah. and I, I feel like I sing that to myself every morning. I'm, I'm trying to buy myself a new life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have uh, so many titles, like producer, writer, filmmaker. Well, which one of them do you really enjoy doing that? I know all of them are joyful for you, but is there some of them that you say, okay, I really love to be, for example, a producer? I really love acting. I love acting just so much. And, um, and I love writing. I love writing as much as I love acting because it's all just playing pretend and being in my own little world. Um, Directing is fun, but I, it's very difficult sometimes to try to uh, maneuver so many me moving parts when I'm not as passionate about it. Um, but I do like producing um, to an extent until as a producer, you hear so many stupid things and everybody thinks they know better than anyone else in the world. And then, you know, I mean, it's just, it gets so frustrating. <laughs> it's something as simple as like music clearance. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having this long involved argument with this one individual about how, you know, well, you can have um, a song from another movie in your independent thing as long as it's... Um, a parody and it's like no no you can't it's illegal it's it's a you know an infringement of copyright law <laughs> it's and you know and i just i just wish that there was another producer that would just you know drop the hammer and say you know no no it doesn't work like that stop yeah. because you know i'm i'm nice and i have kids and i have animals so you know when i say no people say oh well she doesn't probably really mean no <laughs> like no no means no and yeah. unless you want your project shut down, then, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, producing just gets, like, really annoying. 
Yeah, and also be a director. For example, I see in the behind the scenes that actors get offended very fast whenever you tell them, for example, we should refilm it. So how do you deal with that whenever actors behave like that? Ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, a, a little bratty child having a tantrum. You can't really take it too seriously. You just kind of breathe and wait for them to get over their little, you know, display and move on. Yeah. <laughs> because That's whenever the they are famous, uh, it's very hard to tell them, okay, it's not, it wasn't good as much as I wanted, so we should refilm it. So Actually, you know what's so funny? Name actors are totally cool with that. It's like the people that really have never done anything that just, you know, they think being on a set is, you know, you do it two or three times and then you run off to play. And it's like, no, that's, it's not about the, the red carpet or anything like that. It's about putting in the work. People don't understand, you know, there's like this, this massive misconception throughout the world about what you, creating this stuff is about, you know? You can't be on set drunk. You can't be on set, you know, flipping out because you're not getting your way. You can't like, there's all these things that like, you know, name actors, mastered long ago that's why they're names they know they they are great to work with you know you get them on set vivica fox for example you know she was really expensive and um she was very particular about her kale caesar salad and things like that but that woman showed up and on the set she had her lines down she gave all kinds of great performances she was willing to do it 50 million times if she had to. And, and she would even ask for an extra take. That's a professional. You know, people that, like, they're so passionate about it. They just want to, like, be there and do the best they can. Oh, it's like, it, and it's always, always, always people who have only been on a film set once or twice that roll their eyes and think, you know, well, where's my trailer? I should be getting treated better than this. You know, somebody, the AD yelled at me. I'm like, well, that's an AD's job. The AD yells or else nothing happens. It's like, it's just so, um, it's really fascinating. You would think that big actors would be the ones that were little bitches, but no, not at all. It's the newbies that don't know anything. But you know, being a named actor is different from a professional actor. As you mentioned, uh, many of them are professional and they act very professionally. Like recently I interviewed Erin uh, Cummings and uh, she was uh, telling about how professional David Tremor is. And I was surprised about the things that happened because uh, David Tremor is a big star and you expect that this guy should be arrogant when she's on the set. But he's totally cool and uh, yeah. professional. It was uh, very interesting. It is interesting, isn't it? How, you know, it, it's it, the people that have names, they really, they've earned their right to that. They have. And, and people don't seem to want to understand that you've got to earn your right. You don't, it, it, you know, it, it, just because you're a pretty face or you took an acting class or two doesn't give you any, <laughs> any kind of easy pass. Not at all. Exactly, yeah. And uh, as a writer, I'm wondering, uh, is it any specific location that it is your favorite to go there and write your stuff? Or it just happens anywhere it you just are? Ha it just happens. I mean, I've written everywhere. I've, when my kids were little, I would write in a playground with a notebook and a pencil. So it's just wherever I am where I can focus and begin. Um, I love writing in my bedroom because I'm just here with my doggies and my kitties and, and they're such great inspiration. Or outside. It really is just about focusing. And, and I also found that if I um, put on headphones and I just listen to, oh, kick-ass Prodder brought madness yeah. six here. <laughs> um, <laughs> But if I put on headphones and just listen to um, so those, you know, um, different uh, frequencies or binaural beats or whatever, it helps me just kind of tune out from everything that's around me and get in tune with what it is that I'm trying to bring through into the computer. Mm, I see. And uh, how do you come up with your ideas when you are doing that imagination process? Uh, how do you come up with those ideas? 
I don't come up with them. They come to me. <laughs> it's like, it, I, I've said this before and I said, you know, I really believe this, that it's almost like this uh, portal of creativity opens in the top of my head and the, the powers of the universe come channeling in and they just say, okay, Deb, this is what you need to put through into your hands, into the computer. And this is the next project. And it literally is, it's, I mean, it's channeled, it's channeled and it's whatever I'm supposed to write is what I write. And I will even ask like uh, whatever the universe is that is giving me this information. I'll say, okay, I really don't know what to do. Show me, just show me. And then I'll see it and then I write it. The problem for me is that it comes to me usually when I'm in the shower and <laughs> I can take a note that yeah, this is the idea. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, a lot of times like, yeah, I'll be driving or just getting out of the shower or something like that. So what I'll do is I'll open um, voice memo and I'll just say it, I'll speak it so that I don't lose the, the thought. Mm. That's also a good idea. It really helps a lot because you don't want to, you know, when, when that stuff comes, <laughs> it's gold. You got you to gotta keep it, you know? Yeah, that's right. And uh, I saw also some videos of you on YouTube and uh, you were wearing a zombie costume. And I was confused. What was that all about? It was, uh, I did a favor for a friend. Um, it, it's a long story. It's a little weird. <laughs> but, yeah, because it was totally different from the projects that you are having. <laughs> it was weird for me. Well, and I mean, the thing is this too, like, you know, some people will be uh, very judgy about what kind of projects they get involved in or whatever. To me, it's, it's as long as I'm having fun and I'm helping out my friends, you know, if they want to shoot something and I have the time, I'll go play and help if it's an interesting thing. I, you know, I'm not going to turn down something just because it's a little goofy or weird or offbeat. I mean, if I, if I show up and it's truly awful, then I won't do it again. But, um, yeah, I think, I think it's really important as artists too, to not, you know, it's really easy to become arrogant and say, oh, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm better than that. or I'm this or I'm that and make all these judgments where, you know, we're lucky. Anytime someone is asking us to play pretend, you know, it's kind of like if you were in a playground as a kid and, you know, you don't know any of the kids, you show up and, you know, a couple of them are super popular, but you don't know that. A couple of them are just like, you know, new to the neighborhood. You really want to just have a chance to play with everyone to see like, you know, what kind of games you can come up with. And I, that's how I approach the things that I choose to do. So yeah, I did that. <laughs> that was, this guy had this thing where he was, he was pretending to be a zombie and his other people that interviewed were zombies and he didn't have his normal person. So we, and I had been a guest on the show as a non-zombie before. So I thought, you know, why not? It could be fun. We'll see what happens. And, you know, it was a little odd. <laughs> so I didn't do it again. More than a little odd. <laughs> I know, I know. I know, very, okay. But, um, you know, I just, I always feel like I just want to try everything. Yeah, it, uh, it was showing that uh, you were doing this as a favor, but at the same time, when, for example, the camera was on you, we could totally feel that you are not uncomfortable, that yeah. uh, you are doing it with passion, with your energy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if I'm going to show up, I'm going to give everything, totally. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, be half-assed about it, because that's not cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And... Uh, Debbie, let's do something fun. We have a challenge on our page named Crazy Eyebrow. We try to pull one eyebrow up, one down. Can you do that? <laughs> I don't think so. It's amazing why actors can do that because you guys are perfect with facial expression. Yeah, but the thing is, we don't do our facial expressions. Our facial expressions come from our emotions that are inside. So that just as a result like i i wouldn't put on a face okay. yeah i wouldn't do that like <laughs> you know if i'm curious about something or think something is stupid i'll just be like <laughs> you know but i have to have the thought behind it or it's not 
going to like I would never just mock a face or or <laughs> mime something. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's but true. yeah, that's probably why actors can't do it because we're not we're not intentionally trying to control our faces. That's true. Like, because you say that's what do. we think that you guys should do it, but as you mentioned, this is not the case. You are just expressing your feelings. You're right. Yeah, yeah. And anybody that is doing it from the outside in like that is not usually a very um, deep actor. They're usually, sorry, something fell. They're usually um, comedians or that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, during the last interviews, I understood dancers can do it very good. It was surprising for me. How come they this can? is the case? Yeah, they can do it very good. Well, that's because they control their bodies so much. Yeah, yeah. That's so, wild. That, and that totally goes with the theory then. Yeah, yeah. so I'm practicing this on different people. So now I'm coming <laughs> up with my theory. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, by the way, have you ever been in Cyprus before? No, I haven't. Uh, I know this is far away from the U.S., but would you ever consider coming here for a, film, a movie festival or something like that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I would love that. I, when my uh, first film um, came out in the 90s, I traveled all over the world to different film festivals. And, yeah, it was the best time of my life. I would love, I would love to travel with films again. That would be great because uh, here I'm doing my best to having more movie festival. This is actually not my job. I'm a, a university professor, oh. but uh, I'm trying to make it happen here because uh, I am, Cypriots were my host for more than 10 years. And I want to do something in return because I know they can not really use that. That's cool. That's very, very so, cool. So uh, that would be very lovely to also meet you in person here. So there are uh, writing things in the Spanish. Do you know Spanish? Un uh, poquito, sí. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. I, I traveled to France a lot back in the 90s, and I had taken Spanish in high school. And it was because of knowing Spanish that I was able to learn French because of their bo they're both Latin-based languages. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I need to uh, get my Spanish back. When I traveled to Spain, I was able to relearn my Spanish because once I learned French, a lot of the Spanish fell away. It was like the crutch fell apart. So weird. Yeah. Very by the way, in my page, we have lots of people from Colombia and Mexico, and oh. I think this guy from <laughs> Colombia. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, Colombia. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, by the way, David, uh, where people can follow your projects? Um, I on my my uh, regular Facebook page, Deborah Twist. Uh, also on my um, production company page, Luck Star Productions, L U C S T A R Productions. Um, that's on Facebook, and then also Planet Twisted TV which is also a Facebook page, but it's a platform as well that is um, uh, undergoing a reboot. That's great, Debbie. Uh, Debbie, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, it was great having you today with us. I really enjoyed talking with you. I can't possibly get enough talking with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Nice talking to you too. And I'm glad it worked. Uh, Sorry I was late. No, no, that's totally fine. And Debbie, I wish you luck in your next projects, especially the one with the superhero. I'm looking forward to seeing that especially. Oh, that's it's it's mostly like little blips, little commercials that, um, yeah, f for that, you have to follow Yummy Zest, Y-U-M-M-Y-Z-E-S-T dot com. And uh, I'll be all over that. <laughs> yeah, but it's a start. I know that in a big movie, you will be a superhero someday. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Dream come true for real. Yeah, so, Devi, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot to everyone who joined us today. See you. Bye bye. Bye, you guys. Bye, Devi. Bye, Devi. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye.